Hi, in this video I'll show you how to combine uh, worksheets in the same workbook using Power Query. Now we may have instances where we uh, have tables that are coming in from different months and the format's pretty much the same. We have our date, item, quantity, sales. You can see here it's the same for January, February, March. And we want to combine this data all into one consolidated table. Now what we need to do is turn these into tables. We can do that uh, separately or you just using the Power Query capability. What I'm going to do first is just turn these into tables. I, I can use the Control T keyboard function and that turns into a table or if you like to use the uh, insert table that's going to turn it into a table too. If I go to February here, I have to go to insert table, you will notice that the keyboard shortcut is right there too, right? So by my, I'm just going to use Control T, turn into table, click OK. My table has headers and also do that for March here, right? Control T and that is turning into a table. Now you notice that the, they have these table names. That's table three, February is table two, and January is table one. We can give these table names or we can just leave it as the default that's given us right now. Now I'm going to use Power Query and in Excel 2016 you go under the Data tab in the ribbon and it's under the Get and Transform group for previous versions of Excel like 2010 and 2013. You're going to have to download Power Query from Microsoft and enable it. But since I've got 2016 I'm just going to uh, go here to Get and Transform and click from Table. So what's going to do is going to pull this January table into the Power Query editor and I'm also going to pull in uh, February. Now you notice that Power Query has applied some steps. It's sourced the table uh, from Excel into the Power Query Editor and it's also changed the types. It's kind of figured out that this column is a date and time format. It's figured out that this column is all text. Uh, this column is numbers. This column is numbers. I'm going to go ahead and keep this for now and I'll change it when I append it. So go under Close and Load. Close and Load to a connection. I don't want to have this uh, put into a new worksheet yet so I'm going to go only create connection, click load and it's gonna put it into connection and you see it over here in a workbook query so it's says connection only. I'm gonna do the same for February here too. Go to February, go to data from table and uh, do the same thing here and just click as a connection only. Alright so close and load to and make it as a connection. Now I've got these two queries here, Table 1 Table 2, respectively January and February. Now I want to combine them together and I'll use the function or the command is append. That capability, I can do right click, go to append, and I'll append Table 1 and to Table 2. All right, so I only have two tables, my primary table and my uh, secondary table here. So this is with the assumption that, you know, maybe we, I, I have my three months here, but in this particular situation, maybe we just, we're just combining January, February, and all of a sudden, oh, we needed to add March into it, and this is why we're doing it this way. So we have a primary table one and table two. And I'll click OK, and what it's going to do is it's going to pen it together, and this is where I can probably adjust my date. Maybe I don't want that time now. I want just the, uh, just the date portion of it. And... Maybe I want to have the month show up here on that column. So I'll go under Add Column, go add a separate column, and it will extract the month out of that. So I'll go under the Date and go to Month, and I want the name of the month. All right, maybe I'll call this one, I'll just call this one, uh, we'll call this one Sales. All right, and now I go to Home, click Close and Load. I just now I'll close, click Close and Load, and by default, I didn't, it closes and loads and creates a new worksheet. So now I've got my sales worksheet here, right? My, my sales table, my sales query, and it's sheet one. It's a new worksheet here, right? I've got January down to February. If I wanted to add March, I have to add, go to March and also create a connection here. So go under data from table and click close and load close and load and make a connection. Create only connection, click load. Now there'll be table three here, connection only. So so you may think, oh, I need, all I need to do is pen, append sale, table three to sales, but let me show you what happens. Let's go to sales. Let's create a small pivot table out of that. Go to insert and pivot table 
Uh, yes, I selected my range, my existing worksheet. I just wanted to put it here. Click OK. And all I need is maybe just the month name and quantity, right? So I have my little pivot table here. And I, that's, that's, that pivot table is sourced from the data here. Now, if I did something like this and right click and append, and I append it table three, sales table three, click OK. And it, it appended it. Now you notice it created another uh, connection, another query. If I click close and load, you see what happens, right? I I'm, I don't have that I don't have that data now to you know update my pivot table that I had there, right? I, and that's what I want. So let's not do that. Right click, uh, delete. And what we want to do is we actually want to go and edit this particular query. So I go to right click, go to edit, and up here in the ribbon there is the option to append the query. So I will, I just want to append that third query, the March query, right? And so now I can append table three, which is March. So this is probably why it's a good idea to uh, label the tables. Instead of keeping the table defaults, table one, table two, table three, maybe after the table is created, put a name on the table, Jan, Jan, Feb, March, right? So that'd be a good idea next time. Click OK. And now I've appended that query and if I scroll down, you can see you can see that some, the, the steps that we did for the initial portions didn't really follow through here. What I could, there's a couple ways we can take care of this. In each of the times that I created the connection only for January and February, I could have changed the type there. Or in this case, maybe I can move this up, right? So I can move this query up here. And if I go under the different steps, it has applied the steps correctly. So there's a couple ways that we can do this. Uh, if this is, if that, if it's not going to mess up your data too much, we can change some of our steps here. You can see that I changed it. There wasn't really any any errors. But probably a, a good way to approach this is for when we do the January one, we change our data types. When we do the February one, we change our data types. But in this case, it didn't really um, affect it too much by moving the steps in our final query uh, for sales. So I'll click close and load. And once that's happened, you will notice that if I scroll down here at the bottom, we have March. And if I, if I, if I refresh the pivot table, right click, refresh, you notice that March shows up here. So that's the way that we can uh, combine uh, different sheets into one consolidated worksheet to do some analysis. And that's only if we had we if we initially just wanted to combine two and later on we had three. Now if we want to do this more in an automated fashion, let's see how we can do that. So here we're again with our data, our giant Feb March data. Let's turn these into tables. Control T, click OK. Let's name this January or just Jan. Alright, and go to February. And Control T, click OK. Now, an easy way to, or another way to get into this box without using the uh, cursor is just to use a keyboard shortcut, Alt JTA. That takes us into the box itself, the table name box. I can type Feb, and let's do March. Control T for a table, and then Alt JTA, March. Right? Now I need to bring them in. And in this particular instance where we are, we're assuming that, you know, we've got our January, February, March here, but also maybe later on there's going to be April, uh, June, July, and we want to kind of automate this. We have to open up Power Query, but not uh, bring these in right now. We're going to open Power Query, go to Data, and open it as a blank query. So go under New Query, uh, Other Sources, and we'll go to Blank Query. And we're going to use uh, a little bit of M code, and it's just a short uh, M code command in the Power Query editor. Uh, in and we'll use it in the formula bar here. All we need to do is type equal Excel dot current workbook. And open close parentheses, 
press enter. And what this does is it looks and finds the different objects within our workbook. Now we have we had three tables, right? January, February, March, we created three tables. It also, if you've got other things in there like named ranges or uh, print areas, it'll also pull those in. But since we only have workbooks here or the worksheets here, those tables, it's going to pull those table objects in. If I click on the white space, I don't click on the, 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 the link here, but if I click on the white space here, you see that it gives you the table that we pulled in, right? That's January, that's February, uh, and that's March, right? All I need to do now is just click on this expand icon and it's going to expand all those columns and keep that name of the particular month for that particular table. Uh, I'm going to uncheck this because I don't want to use the original column name as a prefix. I just want the original column names to be staying in there. Click OK and now you notice that I've got my Jan, I probably got my February down here, and I've got my dates here, right? Let's call this, let's give this query a new name 2018. Let's go back up. And the thing that I actually want to change here is I want to change that date, right? It, this data type is a any data type. So let's change that into a date. And we've got our date here. We've got our item, quantity, and sales. And let's call that month. Month. All right. Now all we need to do is click close and load. I'm going to accept the default to close and load it into a new worksheet. And bam, I've got my data here, right? So if I wanted to do a pivot table on there, Alt and V, that's the keyboard shortcut to create a pivot table. Let's put it on to my worksheet here. Click OK. And let's say we have our month here and our quantity here. And you'll notice something interesting. You'll notice that it pulled in this 2018. And the reason why it did that, let me scroll down. Oh, yes. The reason why it did that is that that was another object. So this is something that we have to be um, aware of. So and what happens when Power Query, uh, when you do this automated process, right? Power Query, what it did, let's go, let's go troubleshoot this a little bit. All right, let's click outside of the pivot table here. Go to Power Query, right click, edit, and let's see what happened. And a good way to do this is kind of review what the steps here. So we go here, we see, go here, here, go to source, and look at what would happen. When we refresh that data, Power Query added that new table, right? And that's a, that, that sheet one table. So in this is instance, that command, Excel current workbook, workbook, it's bringing back all the objects in that workbook. So we created a new table out of this particular query, and it just gave it some default name here, or gave us the, the name that we gave it here, 2018, right? If I close this, you'll notice if I go down here, and how many records do I have? 175. If I refresh it again, that's going to increase, right? It went to 261, so it basically uh, increase the record. So you have to kind of be aware that when we do it this automated way, because we're using that Excel.workbook command to bring in the objects, we create a new new table object and it's just going to increase it. So what we need to do, when you right click, go to edit, is when we go back here, we should filter it out. Because if we add in April, May, June, July, it's going to increase it again. So I'm going to go under source. And I'm going to remove that one, right? I, I don't want anything that has, uh, I don't want anything that has that uh, 2018. I just want the, the next available ones. Click OK. And click Close and Load. Refresh, that's Refresh 87. And my pivot table here, since it's sourcing from here, it's a bit different, different it's a different cache. It's going to source from what I had previously. So I'll just click Refresh here. Right click, Refresh and that's gone. Now to show that this works, let's close this. Let's add April. So I'm going to press the control key with my left mouse key. I'm going to copy this particular worksheet. Let's call this April. Let's move this over here. And I have to adjust these dates to April and adjust other things. So I'll just type 30, control C to copy, and I'm going to add 30 to these dates here. And 
paste special, and I'm going to paste, and I'm going to do some arithmetic. So I'm going to add 30 to those dates. And let's see if it added correctly. I have these selected here. Go to short date, 42 to 429, I believe. Yep, so that's all April. Let's delete that. I'll just keep these values here. So now all I need to do is refresh this. Refresh this uh, particular query. Click on that to refresh. Now you see that it added additional, additional rows. And so it's got 29, 29 rows. We know we have 29 rows of information here. Let's see if it brought in April. Let's go down here. Oh, it brought in March underscore six. And the reason why I did that is probably because I did not call this, I did not give this a proper name. Did I? Yes, no, I did not. Let's give it a proper name. Fresh. And let's see, scroll down. Yep, now it's April. Now right click on my pivot table, refresh. And now I've got April. Now I've got my 29 rows that came in there. So, so this is the other way that we can combine uh, worksheets that have similar column types uh, formatting uh, and using more kind of an automated approach because we're assuming that we're going to be building uh, additional months or additional data tabs here. This is, in this example, maybe we think we're going to have June, uh, July, May, June, July, etc. And all we want to do is just click uh, on the refresh button to enable that. Now the first example was more of if we just had, oh, we just had January, February, and we didn't expect March. In that, in that instance, we can just append data, and then, hey, March came up, we'll append it there, and we had our pivot tables refresh after that. So that's the way that we can combine uh, worksheets in an Excel workbook, and there's two methods that I show, one using append, and the other one using the excel.workbook functions. Of course, there's more into that. But you can see Power Query is a pretty nifty feature to combine worksheets in, a, in an Excel workbook. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.